Hi folks and welcome to Art Tips with John. I am your host John Morris, the painter of memories and welcome to the show that teaches you not only how to build on your artistic talent but also how to create your very own artist business as well. Welcome to today's show. In today's episode of Art Tips with John, I want to answer a question that Sonia sends in from Blackpool and she writes, John, years ago I painted a picture. I now have brand new skills that I feel could improve this picture. Is it possible to alter it even though the painting has been finished? Big question. The answer to that, Sonia, is absolutely positively yes. I would err on the verge of caution though because you don't want to lose the original feel of the painting. But yes, absolutely it is possible to do that. And I want to show you a video right here, right now on how to do that. So folks, get out your paintbrushes and let's give this a whirl. Okay folks, so this is a painting that was originally created in 2015. As you can see here, we've got a beautiful, beautiful sunset uh, with lots of golden colors. Now I looked at this painting for ages and ages and ages and was just like I need to do something I need to change this it's just it didn't feel complete to me so here what I'm doing I'm adding in a little bit of black paint behind the mountain in the foreground so as you can see here now how we've got a series of mountains that are actually away in the background and that's just by adding black paint uh, I'm using acrylic paint here a little bit of water mix it into your black paint and then just pulling up behind so that mountain now looks like it's it's fairly close, but the other mountains look like they are really quite far in the distance. Now I'm just coming in with a little palette knife, a little bit of white paint, and just pulling down the right side of the mountain. The reason that I'm doing the light side on the right side of the mountain is because that's where my light source is coming from. Here I'm just coming in with a little bit of blue, just coming in with a little bit of shadow color, and just pulling down to the left side, for that is where the shadow is. Palette knives take a little bit of getting used to, but this technique can also be done with a brush as well. Now I'm coming in with a, a quarter inch brush and a little bit of white paint just on the corner of the brush and just adding a little bit of mist. To do this, I'm creating circular motions. Now, if you are right handed, my recommendation would be begin at the right side of your canvas and work left. This creates a really nice effect you're going in a clockwise motion. If you are left-handed, start from the left side of your canvas and work right. Again, this creates a really nice effect and it is important to go the right direction when doing mist. So here all I'm doing is to add in a little bit of black paint on the fan brush and just adding in some little trees here. So you're just starting with a little bit of a point on the top and then zigzagging on the way down. Sometimes it's far easier to show you these things than actually to try and tell you them. And the same thing. So if you want bigger trees, obviously you are just going to make a much longer tree that's much taller. In other courses on Outreach Art, we also look at perspective as well. So if you're a little bit new to this, perspective is definitely something that you may want to research um, and we can definitely help with that. So to do this technique here, all I'm doing is taking a little bit of white on a filbert brush and a little bit of black, white facing upwards because that's where the light is, and then rolling almost in a semicircle. And then doing the same on the left side. Okay, coming in with a little bit of a quarter inch brush here. Now I'm mirroring a lot of the color that's in the sky here. So I've come in with somewhat of an orangey uh, pastel light color, a little bit of white paint. Notice there instantly how that changes the look of the painting. Just by adding a few simple little techniques. Add a little bit of shadow here with a little fan brush, a little bit of black and just moving in from side to side. I'm aware this is a speed painting and obviously it's hard to keep up, but you can feel free to pause at any point this tutorial. This is just to give you a taster of what kind of things are available for you. Okay, coming in with a little sap green, a little bit of yellow ochre, and now just tapping for the layers of the grass. 
it's always amazing when you see this in, in uh, speeded up version just how quick that you can actually paint I wish I could paint that quick always making sure that your brushes are dry and clean um, once you have used them so make sure you wash them if you're using acrylic paint of course you will use water if you are using oil paint you will use uh, turpentine make sure with turpentine that you do have some form of breathing apparatus on like a mask just to protect uh, your nose and lungs because turpentine does give off quite a strong smell that if you're not careful it can literally just take over your entire house so all I'm doing here with a little brush is just adding a little bit of that shadow colour, just shaping the mountains just as I want them. Nothing too difficult at this point. Remember, anything that you paint out, you can always paint right back in. So here's a prime example of it. I've painted out that tree that you can see me going over now. In a moment, I'll paint him right back in. So there shouldn't be anything here that's too stressful for you. Just remember to take it step by step and not to get overwhelmed and you will be just fine. So see all I'm doing here is coming in with that little fan brush, a little bit of black paint, a little water. The water makes it nice and slick and it's ready to go. And then just touching that tree in. Now we've got an entire family of mountains, an entire family of trees, a beautiful new lake and a touched up waterfall. And it's literally that simple. And before you know it, your painting has changed entirely. So this part of the painting goes back to the lesson that I was talking about earlier on, about anything that you paint out, you can always paint right back in. And here, we're just painting those trees back in. This will give you a closer view as to what details and what techniques I'm using for this particular piece of painting. Now we're just adding a little bit of shadow underneath just to create a separator colour between the grass and the water. Just touching up the base now, a little bit of grass green, so that's sap green and a little bit of yellow ochre. Again just putting in a few little rocks down the bottom. adding in a few highlights onto the trees. Now make sure when you're doing this that you're adding highlight onto the, the, the area of the surface of the tree that is actually where the light is. So in this case my light is coming from the right. So you can see there I'm just adding a light highlight to the right side of the trees. You can add darker highlight to the dark side of the trees which creates a beautiful 3D effect few more rocks and I think we are just about done with this little one. Well folks I hope you enjoyed that video there on how simple it is to make a few additions to your artwork that can completely change it hopefully for the better. As always, we aim to bring you some really, really awesome content and you can check out more at YouTube at Outreach Art or on our website at outreachart.org. We've got some brand new courses that are being uploaded there all the time and we would love to have you come and join us in our YouTube channel as well. So guys, until next time, like, share and subscribe. Please tell your friends. We appreciate it every single day of the week. And I will see you next time with another episode of Art Tips with John. I have been your host, John Morris, the painter of memories. And until next time, I'll catch you soon.